All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. Tonight's live stream is centered on professional education. These are the 20 items that the members of Team PSA have answered through our quizzes today. You know? So our quizzes uh, started from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. So again, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you had the chance to answer our quizzes. Again, our items are about professional education. Of course, if you are a member of Team PSA, you can enjoy the full-length video. You can also download our PowerPoint presentation. Of course, you have your free pre-board and free final coaching. So again, if you are still not a member of uh, Team PSA, just send us a message through our Facebook page. Now again, we are doing our live stream in the beautiful Philippines, no? So if there's going to be any interruption, we are going to come back pag merong brown out, no? And again, um, I gave birth two months ago or a little less than two months ago. So if you hear my baby, no, kung meron pong umiiyak, anak ko po yan, no? medyo may sinat yung, yung anak ko ngayon because of his vaccines. Okay, so... Um, Pag meron po kayong naririnig na umiiyak, anak ko po yan. Okay, so again, please join us in our live stream tonight. This is Professional Education. Of course, we would like to welcome back the members of Team PSA, the members of Team Tenders, the members of Team Newbie. If you are a newbie, welcome po, welcome. All the members of Facebook and of course, all the members ng ating Team YouTube. Okay, now we are also going to open our... Uh, uh, next team, no, yung newest team natin is Team Brunner. So abangan nyo po yan. Team Brunner is going to be for March 2023. Just wait for our announcements. So that's going to be our um, team for the new TOS, no? sa bagong TOS ng ating licensure exam for teachers. So again, as I've mentioned, this is professional education. Before we start with anything else, of course, let us all have our opening prayer. Samahan nyo po ako mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. Okay, so again tonight, we will be discussing professional education as I have mentioned. But before that, please do like our video, love our video, share our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. That's going to be very important so that we can reach out to more people. Again, please do like this video. Start a watch party, tag your friends, and of course, share our video. You can also support us by sending us stars on Facebook page and also, of course, our Super Chat Super Stickers on YouTube. Maraming maraming salamat po to all our star senders. No? Sa mga star senders natin, Ma'am Jane Esmero, maraming maraming salamat po. Well, waiting for the rest of you to do like and love and share our video. Let me just read some names of our star senders. Thank you so much, Ma'am Baby Jean Andohar. Thank you po. Ma'am Rina Ledesma 1, maraming salamat for your stars. Again, to all our star senders, thank you so much. Ma'am Akmo Sara, Ma'am Jeline Malabanan, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Athena Nicole, thank you. Ma'am Janiel or Sir Janiel Ocho Saldua, maraming salamat for the stars. Ma'am Sambra Kamenza, thank you so much. Ma'am Baby Karen, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Maricel Hinon Salaw, thank you. Ma'am Maria Jeline Gaviola, thank you so much. Ma'am Raisy Detchos and Ma'am Stephanie Essick, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Cherry May Bayog na Iguan, maraming salamat. Again, to all our star senders, kung hindi ko po nabasa yung inyong names, no, pasensya na po. But of course, we truly appreciate your support to Gurung Pino. Again, please do say us share this video like love and share this video again start a watch party tag your friends and of course do send us your stars super chat super stickers naman sa ating youtube we start with question number one again if you are still not a member of team piache and you'd want to join team piache just send a message through our facebook page facebook ang ating kong facebook page is still just gurung pinoy hanapin lamang po yung gurung pinoy that is our Facebook page. All right, we start with question number one for tonight's discussion. Again, this is professional education. 
please put your answers in our comment box. Number one, very easy, very common question. On learning deficiencies, or on learning deficiencies, what is known as a learning disability in reading? Is it letter A, dyslexia, letter B, dyscalculia, letter C, dysgraphia, or letter D, dyspepsia? Okay, what's your answer for question number one? Ma'am Leia Kamsabantilan, thank you po. Ma'am Jen Fernandez, thank you. Ma'am Danica, thank you. Ma'am Irene Larase Morandante, maraming salamat. Ma'am Mary Joy Soperales Areño, thank you. Ma'am Abigail Benedicto, Ma'am Jade Estrada Rivera, maraming salamat. Ma'am Juvi Necesito, thank you po. Sir Chris Almendral, maraming salamat. Again, these are our star senders. Thank you so much. Sir Fitzgerald Barar, Barairo Almazon. And Ma'am Arzea Lan, maraming salamat. Ma'am Joyce Nava Alarilia, thank you. To all our star senders, again, maraming salamat po. Okay, number one, I see a lot of letter A. Letter A, tumpakaya ang letter A, dyslexia. Okay, now again, as I've mentioned, this is very common. Palagi po itong lumalabas sa left, no? And um, napakadali ng ating question, okay? Now, number one, again, on learning deficiencies, what is known as a learning disability in reading, the correct choice, of course, is letter A, dyslexia, okay? So, uh, una pa lang, tumpak na kayo. Congratulations, okay? Now, we all know there are so many learning uh, deficiencies, no? So, dyslexia po yung ating hinahanap. This is a language, and reading disability, dyscalculia is for arithmetic and math concepts and problems. Dysgraphia is a writing disorder resulting in illegibility, you know, so you cannot write that this graph, that is dysgraphia. And uh, dyspraxia, on the other hand, is uh, problems with motor coordination. Okay, so coordination of your, your motor uh, motor reflexes, no, yung mga responses, motor responses, that would be dyspraxia. Dyspepsia, of course, yan po ay pananakit ng chan, no? So, dyspepsia, hindi ka nakaka-burp, for example, medyo may problema yung inyong digestion, that would be dyspepsia. And that is not a part of our learning deficiencies, okay? And so, the correct choice, of course, is letter A. So, tumpak for, for number one, congratulations. So, we move on with question number two. Which of the following characteristics among learners can indicate that their parents have been authoritarian? Is it letter A, fearful, inhibited? Letter B, strong, outgoing? Letter C, open, friendly? Or letter D, responsive, active? Okay, what's the choice? What is your choice for question number two? Mm -hmm. Ma'am Donaline Borbe Rosaros, maraming salamat po. Ma'am Regine De La Rosa, thank you. Sir Lorenzo Celestial, thank you. Sir Nora Dean Macbod, Maslamama, thank you po. Ma'am Kathleen Hintalan, maraming salamat. Ganding kay Sir Benji Plasigo Duque, thank you so much. Again, to all our star senders, maraming salamat po for supporting Gurung Pinoy. Thank you, thank you so much. Again, please do like, love, and share this video to all those who have started a watch party like Ma'am Trudeline Lanaha, Sir Raymark Cajes Roble, Ma'am Tina Sayago. Maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Please do share our video. No? So again, please share our video para mas marami pa po tayong matulungan. Ma'am Glory Mecca, thank you for the stars. Okay, now going back to question number two. Okay, what's your choice? Which of the following characteristics among learners can indicate that their parents have been authoritarian? Okay, I see a lot of letter D's, a lot of letter C's, a lot of letter A's. Alin kaya ang tumpak na choice? Okay, so iba-iba yung inyong choice. So A, C, D. Walang nag-letter B. Okay, oh, meron ako nakita ang letter B. Okay, kukonti lamang. Okay, what do you think is the correct choice? Which of the following characteristics among learners can indicate that their parents have been authoritarian? The correct choice here would be letter A, fearful, inhibited, medyo maraming naligwak, okay? So, hindi po open-friendly, hindi din letter D, responsive-active. We are looking for fearful, inhibited, bakit? Okay, let's take a look at your slide. Now, remember, you have four different parenting style, no? So, may apat tayong iba-ibang parenting style. Um, the first two that you have here are authoritarian and authoritarian.
hindi halos magkaparehas and usually, no, dahil sa words authoritarian, authoritative, most of the time, you are confused with those terms, no? Ang uh, pagiging similar ng inyong authoritarian and authoritative is that both of these have a lot of expectations coming from their kids, no? So they they have a lot of expectations, high expectations. They want their kids to achieve a lot. But the difference is that yung authoritarian mo, walang support. No? So kukonti yung support. Gusto mo marami siyang ma-achieve, pero wala kang support sa inyong anak. No? So their focus is on obedience, punishment, over discipline. On the other hand, when you say authoritative, you want your child to... Um, to accomplish a lot of a lot of things and you are there to support them you are there to give them love guidance and support no? so this one authoritative creates positive relationship and enforce rules okay so that would be your uh, authoritative okay so going back balikan muna natin yung slide Okay, so again, yung hint natin dito usually, sinasabi ko bad si Aryan. Okay, so bad si Aryan. Authoritarian is uh, bad. When you compare this, no, it's it's not good. It's it's a bad form of parenting style. You are expecting a lot from your child, but you are not giving your child any support. Okay, so this is uh, different from authoritative. Pareha silang malak malaki, no, marami, high yung expectation. Pero authoritative gives the child a lot of support. Now, those that are at the bottom, permissive and uninvolved, pareha silang walang expectations, no? Wala kang ma malakas o wala kang mataas expectation from your kids. You are not uh, expecting your kids to achieve a lot. Iba yung permissive mo, you love your kids. No? So lahat ng luho ng kids mo, binibigay. They don't enforce rules and they believe that kids will be kids. Okay, So usually spoiled yung anak mo. If you are a permissive uh, parent, okay lang, sige, gawin mo whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, So I'm here to just support you. That's permissive. Ang involved naman, wala nang na guidance, wala pang nurturing and wala pang attention and wala ding expectation. So hinahayaan lamang yung yung child another term for this is negligent okay so negligent po again we are looking for letter a because it says here authoritarian again bad si arian and so when you are an authoritarian parent you are expecting a lot from your kid but you are not uh, supporting your kid the focus is on obedience no you just obey my rules you just do whatever it is that i ask you to do Okay, so that's fearful inhibited for number two, letter A, ang tumpak na choice. Okay, pagligwak, okay lang po yan, move on kaagad. We move on with question number three. What is the appropriate teaching learning strategy to respond to cultural diversity among learners? Is it letter A, variety of teaching and assessment methods? Letter B, use of comparative assessment tools? Letter C, group entire class homogeneously? Or letter D, one set of teaching learning methods? Okay, this is question number three. What's your answer? I see A's in our comment box. Ma'am Glory Mecca, thank you for the stars. Ma'am Amor Power, marami salamat po. Sir Pepe Bakule, thank you. Sir Miko Galang Cordova, marami salamat. Ma'am Sarah A. Abdet, thank you po. Okay, so again, to all our star senders, maraming maraming salamat. Ma'am Remy Catherine Mapa Verano, thank you po. Again, please do like, love, and share our video. Napaka-importante that you are sharing our video so that we can reach out to more people. We can have more kaguro. Okay, number three, I see letter A's. What is the appropriate teaching learning strategy to respond to cultural diversity among learners? For example, you are teaching in an international school. No? So international school, iba-iba yung lahi ng inyong estudyante. Meron kang, for example, American, meron kang Pinoy, meron kang uh, other Asians. No? So meron kang Japanese, for example, may Koreans. And uh, you want to teach them and you want to, to teach them in the best method that you can find. No? So what is the most appropriate? Okay? Is it let variety of teaching and assessment methods? Let it be use of comparative assessment tools. Let it see group them homogeneously. Isa lamang yung grouping mo. Uh, or is it letter D, one set of teaching learning methods? Now, as you can see, letter C and letter D here are the same. And so, ligwak na itong letter C and D. You don't have to choose letter C or D, eliminate these, because parehas lamang sila. Homogeneously means one set, the same thing. Now, you are only left with A and B. 
But again, our terms here, our hints would be the terms cultural diversity, and so the correct choice would be variety of teaching and assessment methods. Iba-iba dapat yung inyong teaching strategy as well as your methods because iba-iba yung klase ng inyong estudyante. You don't use comparative assessment tools. You don't compare them, no? Hindi po pwedeng kinukumpara mo sila na ah, mas magaling sa math itong Asian kaysa sa mga Amerikano o mas magaling sa math itong Japanese kaysa sa Pilipino. Hindi po po pwede, no? Um, kahit na uh, as parents, we should not be comparing our kids, lalo na harap-harapan. No? All our kids, all our students are unique in their own way. They're all individuals and so do not compare them. Kanya-kanya po sila, kaya nga meron tayong multiple intelligences by Howard Gardner, okay? And so letter A, ang tumpak na choice. Congratulations to those of you who got it right. For those of you na nilikwak, better luck next time we move on with question number four. If a test item has a discrimination index of negative 0.30, what should you do? Is it letter A, reuse it? Letter B, discard it? Letter C, improve on it? Or letter D, return it to the data bank of test items? Okay, what's your answer for question number uh, four? Again, maraming salamat po sa ating mga star senders, those who have started a watch party. Thank you. Sa mga first timers natin, welcome po. Ma'am Reyna Lynn Pela is matining, first time manood ng live, watching from Oriental Mindoro. Good evening po sa lahat ng mga taga-Oriental Mindoro. Good evening and welcome, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Again, sa mga first timers natin, welcome. Please do make sure that you are following our page and that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. There's so many videos sa ating YouTube channel, no? um, almost 500 videos. Uh, especially sa ating live stream na playlist, maraming maraming videos po doon. So balikan niyo po yung lahat, mag-movie marathon. Uh, it's one of the uh, most effective methods of studying and for and of preparing for your licensure exam for teachers. Meron tayong isang top notcher no, na yung ginawa niya is movie marathon talaga. Si Sir Mark Mission. Okay, so top notcher natin last licensure exam for teachers. First time manood ng live, newbie, Sir Joven Esquilio Mente. Cong uh, congratulations and thank you. Of course, congratulations for finding Gurung Pinoy. And of course, thank you for tuning in. Okay, now what do you think is the correct choice for number four? You have a test item and then you are, your discrimination index is zero or negative 0 0.30. What should you do? Now, when you say discrimination index, this is the index for which your item can discriminate, no, can can um, compare those that are um, high performing student to your poor performing students. Okay, so what are you going to do if the discrimination index of your item is negative zero point thirty? Is it letter A reuse it, letter B discard it, letter C improve on it, or letter D return it to the data bank of test items? Baba, please do it. Um, please make it softly. Uh, sorry po yung aking anak na panganay ikumakanta. Okay, I see C's, B's. Ano kaya ang tumpak na choice? Okay, so your discrimination index is negative 0 0.30. What should you do? The correct choice here is letter B, discarded. Okay, so discarded meaning a eh, reject mo siya or discard no, hindi mo na siya gagamitin. Okay, that's the answer for number four. Let's take a look at your explanation. Okay, so here you have the different indices, negative 0 0.3, you have 0, and you have positive 0 0.3. So again, when you have a negative discrimination index, that means more students who are poor performing students got the item correctly. So, mas marami sa mga bobits mong estudyante yung tumama sa item na yan kesa sa mga magagaling mong estudyante. And so, we say that this item is poor, no? It is questionable. Okay? We we can say that it is not a valid item. Bakit wrong or mali yung mga matatalino mo at tumama yung mga medyo bobits, okay? So, if you have this, you have to discard this item. That is our answer because it is a poor item. So reject or discard it. Now, if your uh, discrimination index is zero, that means parehas. No, you cannot discriminate your high-performing students from your poor-performing students. This is also a poor item. So you might have to revise it, okay? You don't necessarily need to reject it or discard it. You can still revise it. So it tweak mo lamang yung inyong 
uh, item. Now, if your discrimination index is positive, like positive 0.3, of course, this is a valid item. This is a good item. And so you should keep it. Okay. And so the correct choice for number four is letter B, discarded. All right. We move on with question number five. What activity of human intelligence attaches value or quantitative description to measuring results of learning and school activities? Is it letter A, understanding, letter B, critical thinking, letter C, analysis, or letter D, assessment? Okay, what do you think is the correct choice? Sir Chuimark, Leo Ruama, first timer. Okay, welcome po. Maraming salamat for your stars, Ma'am Rosalie Kamayang. Thank you so much. First timer, Ma'am Lina Hilario. Uh, Sir Lina ba? Hilario? Junior kasi. Ma'am Lina Hilario Junior. Good evening po. First timer, welcome. Ma'am Gina May Gonzaga, thank you for the stars. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Chel Morada, thank you. Ma'am Robilyn Barlaan, thank you. Ah, wala na po tayong voucher. Si Ma'am Mary Chris Simundo, baka lumang video pa po yung inyong napanood, no? Kasi we have been doing our live stream since 2020. So baka luma po po yung meron pa tayong gift certificates dati. Okay, wala na po tayong voucher. Watching from Palimbang, Sultan Kudarat. Kahit mahirap ang connection, laban pa rin. Salamat. That's coming from Ma'am Catherine. Good evening po. Ma'am Janel Hoswe, maraming salamat for the stars. Again, thank you po sa lahat ng ating star senders. Okay, what's your answer? I see a lot of letter Ds. Watching from Basilan. Meron ako nakita si Ma'am Rads, Radsna. First timers natin, welcome po. Okay, so again, going back to question number five, what, what activity of human intelligence attaches value or quantitative description? Okay, so your hint here is the term value. Okay, so my value, my quantitative description ka. And your another, another term here is measurement, okay, measuring results. And so the correct choice here would be letter B, assessment. Okay, so assessment po yan. We put value, we put quantitative description, meron tayong scores. And of course, you measure the results of learning and school activities by the use of your assessment. So letter D po ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, not understanding, not critical thinking, not analysis. Now you have to remember that assessment and evaluation are different. No? So uh, sometimes you'd see these terms hand in hand. Sometimes they can be considered syno uh, synonymous, no? pero hindi po sila magkaparehas. When you say assessment, you are checking. Uh, do you check and coach to excellence? You are trying to check the the uh, the performance of your students. That would be assessment, no? But when you say evaluation, you check and grade on time. You put grades, okay? That would already be part of your evaluation, okay? But of course, here assessment lamang po yung ating choice. Wala naman siyang evaluation, and so letter D ang ating kumpak na choice for number five. Okay, we move on with question number six. How is the bi-semester grade per subject for grades 1 to 10 computed? Is it letter A, by grade average for two quarters? Letter B, by grade average the whole year? Letter C, by grade average each month? Or letter D, by grade average each week? Okay, what do you think is the correct choice for number 6? Again, if you are watching us on our Facebook page or our, on our Putol po yung inyong video. So again, to enjoy the full-length video, please to become a member of Team PSA. Magbabalikan nyo po lahat ng videos doon. Hindi na puputol, hindi na wawala. Kahit yung mga lumang videos, nandun po lahat kompleto sa Team PSA. And of course, you don't need to take any screenshots. You don't need to take, to take any notes no? dahil nata-download yung po yung ating PDF after our discussion. Okay, so please to become a member of Team PSA. If you will be taking the LEP in March next year, please do become a member of Team Bruner. Okay, so yung bagong team po natin for March 2023 for the new TOS would be Team Bruner. Okay, I see a lot of letter A's. Okay, so by semester. That means dalawang semester sa isang taon. Okay, so by means two. Okay, so dalawang semester ka sa isang taon. 
in one year you have four grading period okay so that means if your uh, your subject is by semester dalawa lamang yung grading period niya no? dalawa lamang yung quarters niya and so the tumpak na choice here would be letter a by grade average for two quarters you get the average of the two quarters no so kasi by semester ka that means you divide four by two no dalawa lamang yung quarters mo in one semester and so letter a is tumpak Okay, so tama po yung letter A by grade average for two quarters. Okay, so again, if you'd want to become a member of Team PSJ, mag-send lamang po na message later kung saan po kayo nanonood ngayon na sa ating Facebook page. All right, we move on with number seven. If the scores of your test follow a negatively skewed score distribution, what went wrong? Is it letter A, items were wrong? Letter B, items were not in order? Letter C, items were easy? Or letter D, items were difficult? Okay, what's your choice for number seven? Ma'am Bernas, Canalita Hazel, thank you po for the stars. Ma'am Janelle Josue, I passed, sabi niya, I passed the let exam March. Thank you, Gurung Pinoy. Congratulations. Si Ma'am Janelle ay isa na sa ating mga LPTs. Nakapasa na no, ng March. Uh -huh. Watching from Quezon, Bukidnon. Ma'am Inday Basoy Pitugo, welcome po. Watching from Pasakaw, Camarines Sur, or Pasakaw, Camarines Sur, Bicol. Ma'am Regine De La Rosa, good evening po. First time sa live, Ma'am Rose Ramayla, welcome. Ma'am Sara Makapegis Okom, maraming salamat po. Ganon din kay Ma'am Clarissa Sulit Estrella, maraming salamat po sa inyong stars. From Tagum City. Ma'am Josie Fernandez, welcome po. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's. Question number seven. Ma'am Kathleen, first timer, welcome po. Okay, so sabi ng question number seven mo, if the scores of your test follow a negatively skewed score distribution, what went wrong? The correct choice is letter C. Items were easy, okay? So to back on letter C for number seven. Now you all know that your when you whenever you are talking about skewedness, baliktad no. So it does not mean that when you say negatively skewed score distribution, mababa yung uh, scores ng estudyante mo. Actually, baliktad siya. So if your score distribution is negatively skewed, matataas yung uh, scores ng inyong estudyante. Pag positively skewed naman, mabababa ang scores ng inyong estudyante. Okay? So sabi ng number seven mo. Your score distribution is negatively skewed, so that means matataas ang scores ng inyong isudyante. And so we say the items are easy. Lahat sila matataas ang scores, and so the items are easy. Again, tandaan, baliktad po, pag negatively skewed score distribution, matataas yung scores ng students mo. Another term for this would be um, skewed to the left. Okay, so skewed to the left, you're negatively skewed. Positively skewed, that would be skewed to the right. Okay, so baliktad po sila. All right, now we go to number eight. Due to the multiple intelligences and learning styles of learners, which approach works best in order to enhance the learning of each and all events? Letter A, unilateral approach. Letter B, horizontal approach. Letter C, streamlined approach. Or letter D, differentiated approach. What's your choice for number eight? Ma'am Jenny Hugo Escabal, maraming salamat po for the stars. First time manood ng live, Sir Rexy Jundel Kangas Tapugay, welcome po. Ma'am Janice Ignacio or Janice Ignacio, maraming salamat for the stars. Ma'am Santi Bibi Mayeng, newbie, welcome po. Sir Lloyd Santos, thank you for the stars. Ganon din kay Ma'am Chris Alimansa. Thank you po. Ma'am Annaline Villamarin Lambuloto. Thank you for the stars. <laughs> Tumawa si Sir Juan Paulo. Grabe yung bobits. Okay? Medyo pinaganda na nga natin, Sir. Hindi na dinerecho, no? Bobits lang. Parang medyo cute. Again, please do share our live stream. Mga kaguro, share po ng ating live stream. Now, like, love, and share this video. Maraming salamat po. Okay, I see a lot of letter Ds. And of course, letter D is correct, no? Whenever you have multiple intelligences, 
different learning styles, the correct choice will be differentiated. When you say differentiated, iba-iba yung approaches mo, no? iba-iba yung inyong uh, strategies, iba-iba yung um, methods of teaching mo, okay? So, all the rest of your choices here all mean the same thing, unilateral, horizontal, streamlined, pare-parehas. That means homogeneous, no? Iisa lamang yung inyong approach. And so, letter D, differentiated, is tumpak for number eight. Congratulations sa lahat ng mga nakakuha ng tumpak na choice. All right, number nine, which is most likely the behavior of students whose minds are solely aided by the id? Is it letter A, students who discuss and ask questions a lot? Letter B, students would be very considerate and understanding with one another. Letter C, students would find it difficult to wait patiently for their turn at the canteen when hungry. Letter D, students would do more independent work. Okay, ano po yung inyong choice for number nine? Number nine na po tayo, yung aking baby ay umiiyak. Okay, number nine, what do you think is the correct choice? Sir Wilfredo Aliawan, maraming salamat for the stars. First timer from Tarlac. Um, Ma'am Norhata, Makauyag, welcome po. Ma'am G, Andaya, Bation, maraming salamat for the stars. Sir Aladin, Esteria Kalot, welcome back. Hello, sabi niya mga kaguro. Kumusta po, Ma'am Met, best coach ever. Maraming salamat po. Ma'am Ariel, or Sir Ariel, sa Hulga, thank you for the stars. First timer, Ma'am Inday Basoy Pitugo. Uh, maraming salamat po for the stars. Ma'am Tinda Tayan, thank you for the stars. Yung stars po, andyan po, malapit sa inyong comment box. Yung star na icon. Okay, I see a lot of letter C's. And of course, yung tumpak na choice dito would be letter C. Tama po yung letter C. No, students would find it difficult to wait patiently for their turn at the canteen when hungry. Your hint here would be the id, no? Now again, looking back at um, the different uh, entities that we have here, no? So these are all coming from... Sigmund Freud, sabi niya, may tatlong nag i sa ating characteristics, sa ating personality, and sa ating behavior. And these are the id, the ego, and the superego. The ego is the balance between the two, no? So the ego is your idea of yourself. Okay? So sabi ng ego, balance siya between the two. I need to do a bit of planning to get between your id and your superego. And this is... Self. Yung id mo naman, this is your animalistic side. No? Animalistic. I want it now. Wala siyang pakialam. Bahala na si Batman. Kahit my boyfriend, my girlfriend, po pwede pa rin kumarengking. No? That's your id. Hunger, thirst, lust, your libido, no? or libido. These are all connected with your id. Okay? So sexual urges, lahat connected ito with your id. Animalistic side of the person, that's the id. Ang super ego mo naman, that's the opposite of your id. This is the moralistic side, no? So, sabi ng superego, you can't have it. It's not right. So, sabi naman ng superego, if you already have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you cannot talk with any other person of the opposite sex na, okay? So, or even of the same sex, no? If you prefer that. So, pag meron ka ng boyfriend, girlfriend, if you are already in a relationship, you cannot talk with anyone else. That's your superego, the moralistic side. Okay, so again, id, that's the animal animalistic side. Superego is a moralistic side. And ego is the balance between the two. No? So id po yung ating hinahanap. Okay, now we move on with number 10. Which is the best class performance on a 100-item test? Letter A, mean is 80 and SD is 2. Letter B, mean is 82 and SD is 10. Letter C, mean is 90 and SD is 2. Letter D, mean is 80. And SD is 12. Okay, what's your choice for number 10? Thank you, Ma'am Marian, Rose Gillian, and Ma'am Leslie for your stars. Uh, Ma'am Helsetra, Yauga Kimon, thank you po. Ma'am DPPI, Joan Makasling Hinojales, thank you po. Oh, si Sir Kent Dita Yopon, third year college pa lang si Sir, pero nagpe-prepare na siya. Ma'am Delphine Eileen, thank you po for the stars. First timer, sir, or ma'am FJ Cruz, welcome po.
Okay, so again, sa ating mga first-timers, welcome po. Diretso. Diretso sa kusina. Meron pa po tayong lechon doon. Ay, pasintabi sa mga kapatid nating Muslim, no? Assalamu alaikum po. Okay, which is the best class performance on a 100-item test? Best class performance. Is it letter A, mean is 80 and SD is 2? Letter B, mean is 8 and SD is 10? Letter C, mean is 90 and SD is 2? Or letter D, mean is 80 and SD is 12? Now, unang-una, tingnan natin, ano nga pa yung mean at yung SD? Now, when you say mean, that's the average, no? So, mas mataas yung average ng students mo, it would be better, okay? So, if you are looking at the different means of A, B, C, and D, pinakamataas would be letter C, 90, no? So, mas mataas yung average, again, that's the mean, that would be a better performance for your students, Ang SD mo naman is standard deviation. Okay? So, standard deviation po yung SD. If your SD is low, then that means clump yung scores ng students mo. Malalapit yung scores ng students mo. Halos magkaparehas no yung scores ng students mo. When your SD is uh, big or high, that means malalayo yung scores ng students mo. Meron kang mga extremes. Meron masyadong mabababa. Meron masyadong matataas. Okay? And so, mas gusto din natin, no, pag maganda yung mean or your average ng students mo, gusto din natin na mababa yung SD. So that means clump sila, halos lahat sila nandyan sa average. And so the tumpak na choice here would be letter C. No? So letter C po, mean is 90, D is 2. No? So mataas yung kanyang average. Kapit yung score nila sa 90. And so, letter C. Question number 10. Okay, we move on with question number 11. Due to the advent of COVID-19, which initiative is required for curriculum change? Letter A, curriculum implementation. Letter B, curriculum evaluation. Letter C, curriculum design. Or letter D, curriculum modification. What do you think is the best choice for question number 11? Okay, number 11, what is our choice? 